I have never seen another company do what RSL does. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's see if this subwoofer is my new favorite. This beautiful subwoofer is the RSL Speedwoofer 10S Mark II. RSL is probably, I guess it probably has the most loyal, dedicated, excited fan base out of any other manufacturer I've ever mentioned on the channel. I don't believe I've ever seen one negative comment about RSL. Whenever I would do subwoofer reviews in the past, whether it's SVS, Emotiva, Polk, Klipsch, it was always RSL. What about RSL? What about the Speedwoofer? What about RSL? And I always said, well, that's great. I've never talked to them before. Little did I know they had been emailing me the whole time. It had just been going to my spam folder for some reason. And for whatever reason, I opened up my spam folder and there it was. Emails from RSL. They have been great. They sent me two pairs of speakers, different sizes, and then they sent me the Speedwoofer 10S Mark II, which is available today for pre-order. I had never seen another company do that outside of like bike wheels. So there's a bike wheel company called Flow, and they would do basically a limited run. They would do a manufacturing run and they would always sell out. So you would have to get on a wait list even to buy these wheels. I'm not saying this is exactly the same, but what I am saying is you can pre-order it today and it will start shipping, I think, end of April. When I got these in, you could not buy the Speedwoofer 10S. So if you are in the market and you're interested in this product, I would put your pre-order in. They also have a 30-day in-home trial, so if you don't like it, you can always send it back. But this is a product that I don't think stays in stock all the time. So if you need a new sub, might want to pull the trigger today. If you are new here, please consider subscribing and liking this video. I do this for a living, so it means the world to me. If you'd like and subscribe, all of this content is free. I get sponsors. I get some ad revenue, so I try to bring you as much content as I can. We have over 600 videos, so chances are there's something out there for you. So please like this video and subscribe. From a size perspective, the 10-inch speed woofer is a little bit bigger than the SVS SB1000 Pro, which is a sealed subwoofer. This is not a sealed subwoofer. It has a port, but it also uses compression something or other technology. Kind of like a transmission line, but not as complicated, I guess. You can go over the website and read everything about it. The other good thing is this subwoofer has a great manual. There's actually a spot in the manual that has stupidity with a line, like a Ghostbusters thing through it, which I, get, I got a kick out of. But from a size perspective, the 10 inch is slightly bigger than my sealed SVS. So it's about two inches wider, about three inches taller and about an inch deeper. And I was able to put it in the exact same spot that I usually have my SVS subwoofer. So while it's bigger, it's not obnoxiously bigger like my Klipsch subwoofer that I have upstairs. I still think this can fit in most people's applications in most areas. And the Speedwoofer 10S Mark II has some well, better, more advanced features. So there's an improved compression guide technology tuning with rear venting, precision 10 inch woofer with heavy die cast aluminum frame, massive two magnets stacked on top of each other. This allows higher excursions, excursion, which means that it moves more. And then it has a 400 watt RMS amplifier, class D amplifier. They said if they rated it at peak, it would be well over a thousand watts, but 400 watts on a subwoofer RMS of this size is plenty. I don't think any of my other subwoofers have a more powerful amplifier. Also has some new DSP features. When you click off the low pass filter, you just click it to the left, then it enables, it enables it to go deeper down to 22 Hertz, which is pretty low for something of that size, something 
a subwoofer of that size. One inch front baffle. And this thing is, it's not too terribly heavy, but you can tell when you pick it up, it's solid. So it has a one inch front baffle, which is awesome. And then I think it has three quarter inch bracing inside. They know what they're doing. Okay, they're not trying to pass one over on you. The enclosure construction and quality is super good. Now, one can argue that the finish on this is a little bit plain Jane. For me, I like that because usually that means, hey, it's not super expensive. I don't want a piano gloss finish on my equipment because that means it's probably more expensive and I'm paying for the finish and not the sound. Here, you're paying for the sound performance, not the finish. And then finally it has wireless capability. I didn't bring it in. It's a little wireless box that you hook up to your receiver or your amplifier. And the wireless receiver is already built in to the subwoofer. So then you can put the subwoofer, well, wherever you'd like it. Probably can't put it a block away. Probably can't put it across the street, but you can probably put it in the corner of your living room across from where your amplifier is. I've had this in my living room for about the last month watching movies as well as listening to some music and television shows. I'll tell you this, some subwoofers just don't feel like they have enough oomph. And I love the SVS SB1000 Pro, but I always feel like I just, even when I have it maxed out, max gain, I don't feel like it's giving me as much bass as I want. There usually is something in my AVR receivers called double bass. I'll turn that on but I often find myself having to adjust the bass a lot or the subwoofer level a lot on my AVR. Now the controls are what I would consider to be traditional controls. It has a gain or a volume setting and it has a adjustable phase setting, which I love. You just turn it until it sounds like the bass is coming out of your speakers, then you leave it alone. Some, a lot of subwoofers just have a phase switch, zero or 180. I like the phase control, the adjustable phase control. And then obviously it has a low pass filter or you can click that low pass filter off if you're using your AVR to do the crossovers. It's a long way to say that I never felt like I had to max the gain out on this subwoofer to get the level of bass that I want. I pretty much left it at midnight. Midnight, maybe a little bit over to one, but then I was still able to dial it in from my receiver or processor to get it exactly where I wanted it. It's a long way to say that I didn't feel like I ever was lacking on any horsepower for this subwoofer. As far as sound goes, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that I am some type of, I'm not the paragon of subwoofer reviewers. If it goes boom, if it's not sloppy, if it seems somewhat clean, and fast, then that's good for me. And the, if it's the cheaper, the better, right? I will say that the Speedwoofer Mark II, Speedwoofer 10S Mark II, checks all those boxes. I will say that I think it has a bit more texture on the bottom than the SVS when I'm listening to music. When I'm listening to movies, I couldn't tell a bit of difference, except there was a big punch. Now, the SVS is sealed, while this one is not. So the extension was amazingly similar to my giant 12 inch Klipsch subwoofer that's upstairs. And I actually think the RSL has a more powerful amplifier. So I didn't put it upstairs, but long term, this will probably be going upstairs because I have less room upstairs. And the Klipsch takes up a pretty good chunk of real estate up there. And I think I'll get more out of this smaller subwoofer than I will out of the Klipsch. A lot of times I tell people to get a sealed subwoofer because generally they're faster for music. I didn't really feel like I had any type of penalties for having a ported subwoofer here for music. I thought that the bass lines were separated out on a lot of metal track when they have 16th notes bass drum. I never thought I got money. I guess you could say it's the fastest ported sub I've heard, but again, I'm not an expert. I just play one on YouTube. I'm super impressed with RSL. Not just their speakers and their subwoofer, but the company. But I think the big thing to take into consideration here is the overwhelming response from previous owners or current owners. Again, I cannot I don't think I've ever seen a company that has this much love 
from the audio community. I don't think I've seen one negative thing said about RSL in my comments. And that's the first time that's ever happened. I think this is fairly priced at $450. And I don't think you're gonna find a subwoofer that's priced close to this that's gonna give you the same type of performance. You do sacrifice a little bit of convenience over an SVS because you don't have the app that you can dial in. But once you get this dialed in, if you're gonna leave it in a semi-permanent location, then you only have to set it up once and then you're done. Me, personally, I move subs around a lot. I use different speakers with subs a lot, but I really like this one. And it's not like most subwoofers don't get set up the same way. If I had to choose between the SVS and the RSL, oh, it's a tough choice and I think it would come down to the convenience factor. I do think the RSL sounds better. I do think the RSL has a lot more gumption, even though they are rated similarly when it comes to power specifications. And I think the Speedwoofer 10S Mark II plays better in bigger rooms than the SVS SB1000 Pro. They're both great. I don't think you can really go wrong with either one of them, but I kind of like the RSL. I'm really impressed with RSL. With every product that they've sent me, I've been very impressed. I think it's reasonably priced i think it's you're getting more value than you would from other companies they have a great return policy and i think they're easy to work with more importantly it looks like these are in demand people are buying these these are not being put on sale and they have a whole bunch of extra inventory and that says a lot about a company if you have any questions just go to any forum and type in rsl speedwoofer and see what people have to say so if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio man. Every Sunday night with patron only Zooms, patron only Discord, patron only Facebook group. You can also use the links in the description. Those are affiliate links. However, I don't think that this is an affiliate link for RSL, but that's okay. I would place your order, pre-order it if you want a new subwoofer today. You can also sign up for Amazon Music, Tidal, or Rune. Links in the description. Click sign up. Usually there's a 30-day trial period. Even if you quit, I get a couple of dollars. You can also use the thanks button down at the bottom of the video next to the share button. Buy me a cup of coffee. Put a tip in the tip jar. But don't feel compelled to tip me or give me any money at all. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen maybe through your new RSL Speedwoofer 10S Mark II and fill your soul with bassy happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm a cheap audio man.